Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to Linux Quest. Today we're going to take a look at Linux Mint's web app app and we're going to go through and do a setup on that so that you can see how easy it is. What are web apps? Well, if you're not familiar with that, it's a way that you can take a website and create a windowed application, if you will, that fit, well, it feels like an application on your desktop. It allows you to pin it to the panel uh, and in this case, it doesn't matter which browser you use. It could be Firefox or Chrome or Chromium. Um, if you're familiar with Peppermint OS, they implemented this back in the day, and it was one of the things that really stood out to me uh, the first time I tried Peppermint OS. So the Linux Mint team has this in beta. I've been using it, and it seems to be uh, ready for prime time. I've had no issues with it. So let's step through and create a web app so that you can see what that looks like. Now, one of the things here that I do appreciate is I use Firefox currently and I bounce back and forth between Firefox and a few other browsers. So because this is browser independent, um, you could set everything up through Firefox, for example, for your web apps. And then um, if you wanted to use, say, Vivaldi just for browsing and keep those separate, then you could do so. All right, so from here, what we're going to do is go ahead and launch the web app. And you'll see I've got a few here. I've got Google Maps. We use Outlook for work, so I've got that pinned. Um, we're just going to create a new web app. And so we're going to hit the plus sign here, and we're going to give it a name. And I'm going to go ahead and just call this one YouTube. And then it's going to ask you for a URL. And whatever URL that you copy here and paste will be the page that pulls up. So make sure within that website, you're on the exact page that you want to see when you first launch the web app. So we'll go ahead and paste that. And here you'll see it automatically populated the icon for YouTube. It recognized the URL and put a YouTube-like icon in place. If you don't like the icon that you have there, you can click on that, go to say application list, and then scroll through once this populates and choose a different icon. I assume this would work with whatever icon set that you have in place. So I think this is a really nice feature. It allows you to really customize this. Next up, I appreciate this as well, you can choose which category um, you want that particular icon to be placed in in your application launcher. So here we have internet, accessories, games, so on and so forth, sound and video. I'm going to go ahead and put that one in internet for now. And then it's going to ask you which browser you, you want to use to open up this application. In this case, we just have Firefox. If you want a navigation bar like we see here, you've got an option for that as well. And so far, I've kept this turned off just to kind of keep that window slim and trim. So that's about it. Now we're ready to hit OK. And from there, you'll see this in the lineup. Now, if you want to go in later and edit that, you can highlight the app and hit the Edit button here. Um, otherwise, you could go right here and launch directly from here. So we're not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And we'll close out Firefox. And we'll go into our application launcher and scroll over to Internet. And you'll see YouTube here. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and add that to the panel. And now it's going to act like it's an independent YouTube application within a window. And everything else is kind of removed from what you see within YouTube now. And this is kind of what gives it, you know, there's no menu list or anything like that. And this is kind of what gives it a, um, an application feel. You can minimize, maximize the window. You could do this through the browser too, no problem. It's not going to store that data on your PC. If you don't have an internet connection, it's not, not going to be able to launch into that website. Um, but so far it's very handy. I, I think we're, we're in a world now in technology where things are going to kind of collide anyway. You know, you'll be able to use iOS apps on Android and Android apps on Windows and Linux. And I think we're finally getting to a time through emulation and other, um, you know, open source projects and things where if you've got those, you know, particular applications that you, you must have, I think there'll be a day here soon where it's going to be OS independent. If you want to run Linux, you'll be able to one way or other get access to those applications. Uh, you know, if you're running Windows, the same. Honestly, for someone like myself who likes trying different operating systems, and I know many of you watching this video are the same way, you just get into that kind of thing. You like to experiment. 
use different OSs, and you want to be able to access what you you know deem necessary in in the application world. So anyway, very cool. Wanted to share this with you in case you'd missed it. As always, appreciate you watching.